This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. For your information, Hazleton's mayor responds to transportation funding cuts from Luzerne County. That and more next. Good evening and thanks for joining us at FYI. I'm Ken Cara. In an unexpected move, Luzerne County has cut funding for Hazleton Public Transit. FYI's Lisa Sugar talked with Hazleton Mayor Joe Yanuzzi about the situation. Years ago, uh, there was an agreement, and I'm talking like 15 years ago, there was a, uh, an agreement made between Luzerne County and the city of Hazleton to give us $150,000 and that would cover uh, the allocation that they, they give and extra. So we agreed on 150, we won't ask you for any more money and that's the way it was. It went on for years. Well, this new council in their creative financing came up with the idea that, oh, we overpaid you all those years. No, it was an agreement that we would do that. We kept that money into a reserve to build up to be able to purchase capital improvements, such as buses and stuff. So we have a reserve of 500 and some thousand dollars in which we wanted to buy a bus. Wilkes-Bear has a reserve, who gets millions more than us, has a reserve of $100,000 because they blew their money so because they don't have any money, they, they made us pay ours out of our, well, they're telling us to do that. Whether I'm going to do that or not, I don't know. Uh, I believe that Luzerne County is supposed to provide us with transportation, and they should. So uh, right now, it was $134,000, I think, that we have to take out of reserve to be able to get this year's allocation. So what is the next step then? Would you consider joining the LCTA? Absolutely not. Read the paper, watch this TV, and you'll see how well they're run. They, I mean, even uh, Urban now, he's talking about he's not going to do anything unless we uh, merge. My opinion is I'm a businessman, and I look at Hazleton uh, Transit doing so well with the reserve, no problem. Go up there, they're uh, being investigated. They overcharged the state $3 million. They, uh, they were fined. Uh, the management's under arrest. It's like, and, and their parent company, which is Luzerne County, is in the red. Uh, no, I don't think I want to merge with them. I want to merge with a company that's a little bit more profitable. What they should be considering is turning it over to us. But that's just a joke. Well, what will happen then for the city? What does this mean for the city financially? And will you pay it? When do you have to decide what to do? Uh, I have to see when the allocations do. I really don't know. It caught me off guard last week. Um, but if we did, we would probably lose that capital asset uh, but at my purchase, not purchasing a bus, but we would uh, be able to survive this year. We could pay that money. but. It's, it's the principal that counts. It's the way things are done. This county uh, council has no principles whatsoever. They threw out the security savings, said it was a backroom deal, shady, and, and they threw that out and accused us of doing something wrong. And they think they're going to make more money by selling it on the, on the market. And this here way, this way that uh, with the transit is another hundred and some thousand dollars. So. Totally, it's like 400 some thousand dollars they're trying to take out of the citizens of Hazleton. All right. Hazleton Mayor Joe Yanuzzi will keep you up to date on what transpires. Thanks, Lisa, for that story. Now, Lehigh Valley Hospital is expanding. FYI's Kulsum Khan has the details on the new facility now open in the city of Hazleton. A visit to the doctor usually means booking an appointment or potentially spending hours in a hospital waiting room. But since a new medical facility opened recently in Hazleton, patients with minor health issues now have another option. Our primary service is Express Care, which is a physician practice, a physician based practice that allows for walk in patients for services uh, from everything from a scratch to sore throats to abdominal pain. We're meant to be an adjunct to the family doctor. Patients that come to Express Care can expect a shorter wait time to see a doctor. If you come to an Express Care, you'll be in and out much faster than an emergency department. Our target is 45 minutes or less. 
Repi emphasizes that express care is not for critical emergency situations. In those circumstances, patients should go to the ER at Lehigh Valley Hospital, Hazleton. Greg Jones is the site director for Express Care and says that there's been a pretty good response from the public so far. It started out slow, but we're building gradually. Every day we're seeing more and more people coming in. First-time visitors should bring a form of identification. Express Care is located at 564 West Broad Street. Hours are Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., and 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. on weekends and holidays. Reporting for FYI, I'm Kulsum Khan. Thanks, Kulsum. A 13-year-old may be charged with several traffic violations after hitting a Monoy City police vehicle with his bike. According to police reports, the minor was traveling the wrong way on a one-way street, South 13th Street, in the borough when he hit the driver's side door of a police cruiser on East Market Street. The police car, driven by Jonathan McHugh, was moving through the intersection when it was hit and sustained moderate damage. The boy was taken to the hospital by his mother. And now news from the desk of Luzerne County Council. A special meeting of County Council will take place next Tuesday, July 29th at 5.30 p.m. It will be held in the Council Meeting Room at the Luzerne County Courthouse. Coming up on FYI, we have an all-new What's the Sense? Home decorating tips with Janine and Tamara. And we'll stop by Eckley Miners Village to see what they are planning for 1940s weekend. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. And we're in your community today at Eagle Rock Resort with Tamara Herzberger, and we have some great ideas for you. We're at the Craven's Backyard, beautifully located near our lake. It's amazing here. It's a great view and you're working with doors today. I am. This is actually something that I did for the 4th of July, mm -hmm. but I just staged their home yesterday because they're getting ready to sell it. And when I saw the backyard, I thought this is definitely a, a beautiful place to put this. And what I did is I used a door, okay. just an old door, and I actually found it on the side of the road by the post office in our town. Uh -huh. I took it, I just whitewashed it a little bit with some with some white paint and I hung it. I put some eye hooks and S hooks in it and just strapped it to the trees. Okay. They're great because if you want to put a table on the ground and mm -hmm. it's not a steady, even ground, mm -hmm. it can just hang. Okay. You know, How much weight can this hold? Pretty much because okay. it's, it's, it's held up by these chains. I have the chain link and just like the S hooks okay. that keep it. Yeah, and as high as you want, as low as you want. And we are having a collection of old doors in our downtown. We are. We are doing a door project downtown um, with all the revitalization that's going on. So I'm collecting doors and we're doing a project. So if anybody out there has any doors, you can contact me. I'm at 11 East Broad in Hazleton, downtown, right next to the Dragonfly. Um, or you can call. 570-582-5467. And from working with old doors, we talked about working with old tires, and this is really a nice display of what you can do with your old tires that are laying around. Yeah, it's just cool. It's it's actually, I put it a different way, and mm -hmm. I just took fabric, lined it, and then that rag tying that I love to do, I just rag tied it. And I did a few of them. Um, they're actually really pretty. I did them in different colors, but they're fun. And the again, grandkids love it. They come down it. here and they swing. <laughs> And yep, look at the lake, so, look at everyone in the lake. Just a little cool idea for an old recycled tire. All right, what are we talking about next week? Next week it will be um, wine bottles. Oh, okay, so we're going to work with wine bottles and also corks. Corks. Okay, and okay. if anyone has any questions, again, you can reach tomorrow, located in downtown Hazleton. Neat project and a beautiful view, and it's great to come out here and enjoy the great weather here in northeastern Pennsylvania. We'll see you next week right here on FYI in your community. Time now for FYI News 13 weather. Everyone I talked to today mentioned how hot it was. Well, imagine how hot it is for our furry friends. Remember to keep your pets cool on these hot days and give them the water that they need. And also remember to watch Adopt Me on FYI Weekend from the Hazleton Animal Shelter. With that said, it looks like it will cool down, but only for a bit over the next few days. 
Tonight, as we take a look at our weather from the National Weather Service, there is a chance of thunderstorms, 60% chance there. The low will be 60 degrees. On our extended forecast, Thursday, it will be mostly cloudy, the high near 75 degrees. Thursday night, another mostly cloudy night. The low is 57. Friday is a nice day, sunny, the high near 78. Friday night will be clear with a low of 57. Saturday is partly sunny. We'll reach 79 degrees and then at night get down to 60 degrees as there is a 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms. It goes up to a 50% chance on Sunday and then Sunday night back down to 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms. Tonight's weather is brought to you by Valley High, the area's oldest ice cream and fast food restaurant. Stop on in for a cold treat including our ice cream and yogurt or some hot food including our burgers, hot dogs, fries, and much more. That's Valley High, Route 93 in West Hazleton. Treat yourself today. We are here in front of the 1940s house at the Eckley Miners Village and talking about a wonderful weekend that's coming up this weekend. To my left is Kristen Bogash. She's the Summer Events Coordinator here at Eckley. And Dr. Bodie Morin is the Site Administrator. I'm going to start with Kristen. Big 1940s weekend. You're dressed beautifully for it, as is all your other friends here at Eckley. Tell us all about it. This is a great event that overviews the 1940s era. Um, it's based in the coal mining patch town, but it's meant to um, pretty much just give an overview of everything that people would see during the 1940s. We're going to have access and allied forces throughout the entire village setting up camp. Um, we will have book author Gail Furford talking about a book that she compiled of 88 World War II letters that Sergeant Martin A. Paulson wrote home to his sister during wartime. Um, we'll have Holocaust survivor Severin Feyerman joining us as well for the second year in a row. Um, he's in his 90s, so we're, we're very excited to have him back and talk about his experiences in the concentration camps. Um, we will have a 1940s radio show put on by the Eckley players as well. Um, they have a partnership with WAZL to put this on, so that's going to be a great thing for everyone to see. On Saturday, we're going to have an antique car show. Um, anyone who's interested in attending who has an antique car is welcome Saturday um, to join us at 11 a.m. and we'll have judging by 2 p.m. We'll be giving away trophies. We have dash plaques for all of our participants, as well as musical performances by Leilani Chisonis. Um, the Blue Notes as well, they'll be joining us. Uh, Dave Matsinko has traditional folk music and we'll have the Vinatieri sisters performing as the Andrews sisters. Wow, pretty nice. And I know there's a dance incorporated in this weekend as well. Yes, the dance is Saturday night, July 26th. It runs from 6 to 9 p.m. in the Freeland Public Park Pavilion. We'll have music by the Hazleton Philharmonic Big Band Sound, as well as a performance by the Vinatieri's sisters performing as the Andrew sisters. And then on Sunday, we do the entire weekend all over again. Um, we'll be kicking off Sunday morning with a church service in Immaculate Conception Church here in e at Eckley. Um, we will have Reverend John Oler, who plays a chaplain for the 45th Infantry Division, conducting church service at 11 a.m. Wow, that is a lot of stuff going on, and it sounds really interesting. Bodhi, this is such a wonderful thing to recreate history and let people see what happened. How impressed are you by what's taking place and all the events that go on here at Eckley? Well, this is really a great, um, a great, a great place and a great uh, series of events that we have for the public. Um, not a lot of people really think about the war effort for most of our, uh, for most of the patch down the coal industry, but really from the Civil War, World War One, and World War Two, really had a big impact on the uh, the history of northeastern Pennsylvania. Now, while the industry was in decline from the 20s, and we saw a little bit of a, a, a resurgence in coal mining um, for the war effort in, in the 1940s. So, really, it's kind of nice to look at um, at this era as um, really a key part in the history of our of our region um, and we're very happy to be able to look at the 1940s and talk about how Eckley performed or how Northeast Pennsylvania performed with the uh, with the war effort in general. All right well this is going to be a fabulous weekend here at Eckley from 10 to 5 both Saturday and Sunday and the big dance six o'clock on Saturday night at Freeland Public Park. We hope you'll come out and enjoy all of it. And now let's turn to tonight's community calendar. The Frackville Rotary Club will hold a Rotary Day free swim on Wednesday, August 6th from 6 to 8 p.m. at Frackville Memorial Pool. Pool admission is free and there will be a DJ. And now here's your midday winning Pennsylvania lottery numbers. The Daily 252, the Big 4, 7449. 
Quinto 20687, Treasure Hunt 2814, and 30. Coming up next in sports, Dave Seaman joins us to talk about Russ Kanzler and the Tampa Bay Rays. This is FYI News 13 Sports. Once again, it's Dave Day on the Sportscast. Dave Seaman, the sports editor from the Hazleton Standard Speaker, joins us on FY. And we're talking local baseball, kind of. Two local guys, at least. Um, Dave, let's start with Russ Kanzler. We did some stats on him. Um, the Iron Pigs' first series after the All-Star break against the Syracuse Chiefs. Kind of a rough series for Russ. Then he hits a home run recently. And last night goes 3-4 for four with three doubles and three RBI. And really through the last 10 games, hitting 323 for the Iron Pigs and a 970 on base plus slugging. So not a bad run actually for Russ Kanzler, except for that rough spot with Syracuse recently. I think we've uh, we've made that point before. Is uh, the, the great thing about Russ is he's always able been, been able to put uh, bad stretches behind him and focus on the, the next day. Uh, he doesn't dwell on, on anything negative happening in his game. And when he gets the opportunity, he's shown what he can do. And um, obviously on Tuesday night, he had one of the best nights he's had since he's been with the Iron Pigs. So everyone get out to see the Iron Pigs. Season comes to a close at the end of August. And then September call-ups start happening, Dave. You said, talk about the Phillies, maybe Russ's chances of getting one of those call-ups. Uh, well, the Phillies, there's a lot of rumors what, what, what the Phillies are going to do. They have a lot of players, uh, veteran players, um, maybe part of trades. Uh, Marlon Bird comes to exam. He's an outfielder. Russ has been playing a lot of right field. Maybe that's an opportunity for him. Uh, Ryan Howard, can they get rid of Ryan Howard with the contract that he has? Uh, Ryan Howard's been struggling a lot this year. Um, can the Phillies get rid of him? I don't know. That's the question the uh, Philly fans are going to be pondering for the next couple of weeks, and we'll see what happens. But I, I think Philadelphia would be a great opportunity for Russ. It's a, it's a hitter's park. Uh, it's a chance to play close to home, and um, I, I think it would be great for him. Nice to have Sandberg as a manager as well, Ryan Sandberg there. And let's talk about the Tampa Bay Rays now. They seem dead in the water a few months ago, I, but I shouldn't say that. If you know the Rays, you know they're never dead in the water. They've ripped off six straight wins coming, um, including last night against the St. Louis Cardinals. Rays looking really, really good. And it did seem in the beginning of the year. I see them a lot as a Red Sox fan. They just couldn't, and Joe Madden has said it over and over again, get their pitching clicking when the hitting was clicking. Now it all seems to be coming together, and they're making another run. Is it realistic, though? Do you think they could even pull this one off? They're five and a half out of the playoffs now. Who would have thought when they were 20-some games out of, uh, away from the 500 mark uh, a few weeks ago, a few months ago, uh, it looked like it was a dead season, like you said. But um, Joe Madden, uh, like Russ Kanzler, uh, always focusing on, on, on the present. Uh, don't dwell on what happened yesterday. Think about what can happen today and in the future. And they're loose. I mean, uh, if you read anything re regarding baseball, Joe Madden runs one of the loosest clubhouses in the league. And they keep that loose feeling, attitude throughout the season, whether they're going through good stretches, bad stretches, and that spills over to when they play. And um, you talk about the beginning of the season, too. I mean, the beginning of the season, they're, they're wrecked with injuries. Their pitching was wrecked with injuries. Um, now they're starting to get a little bit healthy. They're hitting a little bit. They're beating a lot of good teams on the road, which they've always been able to do. And that's usually a recipe for you know, success as the season goes on. It'll be an interesting weekend. The Boston Red Sox head down to the Trop. They're also starting to get on track a little bit. And really quick, Dave, the Babe Ruth State Tournament was in our area. The Valley local team had a really good run in this tournament as well. You got to see them. I got to see them. It was a lot of fun watching them play baseball. Just some final comments on their run as they had, it ended in the semifinals of the state tournament. Yeah, to get through a tournament like that, you need a lot of pitching. And uh, this Valley team was talented on the pitching end. But to pitch and play every day, day after day, uh, you got to bring uh, top-notch pitching every day. Um, and if you don't have the pitching and it kind of, you know, you get tired and you get fatigued, especially with the heat, um, and, and teams wear down. And uh, I think the, that caught up with Valley a little bit in the tournament. But uh, nonetheless, a great run. Great group of kids. Um, we're going to be hearing a lot of, from, from those athletes on, at the local schools over the next couple, over the next couple seasons. It's a very daunting tournament there. Well, Dave, thank you for joining us. Next week, we're going to get ready for Pocono, also Penn State Media Day coming up, so stay tuned. It's Wednesday, and here's some delicious alliteration. It's Signature Steak Night at Bottlenecks. All of their signature steaks are only $9.95, plus bottomless soup and salad for only $2.95. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. First tonight, on July 26th, you're invited to the 15th annual ECUS Road Rally, all to benefit the Helping Hand Society. Registration begins at 10 a.m. at the Slovak Club in Hazleton, and the ride leaves at noon. The Harwood Fire Company will be holding the after party from 2 to 7, 
For info, call 570-455-4958. And finally, the Valley Regional Warriors travel teams located in Drums will be holding tryouts on Monday, August 4th at 6 p.m. at the Freedom Park Softball Complex in Drums. For info, call 570-401-1144. At tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Eva Kislin of Freeland, funeral is Friday at 11 a.m. at the St. Luke's Evangelical Lutheran Church. Arrangements are by the Cotterall Petrilli Funeral Home. Donald T. Walters of Sugarloaf. Arrangements will be announced by the Butler Chapel of the Crofton Hughes Funeral Home. Stephen Eugene Wilcox of Sugarloaf. Funeral is Friday at 11 a.m. at the Harmon Funeral Home. Friends may call from 10 to 11 a.m. And Steve Tennant Lowe of Coldale. Mass is Thursday at 10 a.m. at the St. John the Baptist Byzantine Catholic Church. Friends may call Wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m. and Thursday from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. at the Gula Funeral Home. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop located on 15th Street in Hazleton. For delivery to all local funeral homes, call 570-454-0111. My name is Leanne Falabelle. I'm the Vice President of Marketing here at the Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce. And today I'm going to talk about our Women's Networking Luncheon, which is taking place on Tuesday, July 29th. And it's from 12 noon until 1 p.m. And it's going to be held at Cassatt's Cafe on Alter Street. Um, weather pending, which I'm sure is going to be a bright, sunny day. We're going to be having it outside and we'll be having a barbecue style lunch. All women from throughout Greater Hazleton are invited and encouraged to attend. Our programs, as I said, are just an hour long, so it's in the middle of the day, but we you know, know that it's in the middle of the day. We get people in and out, but in that hour, we do provide them with a lot of great information and an, a great opportunity to socialize and network with one another. And we always have a guest speaker, and this month our guest speaker is going to be Roberta Williams, and she is the president of the League of Women Voters um, in Radnor, Pennsylvania, and she's also a former League of Women Voters uh, PA State Board Member. And so we're very excited and honored to have her and she's going to be providing a discussion on a year-long study that the Women League of Voters um, held and it summarizes the issues of permitting regulations and taxation of natural gas extra extraction from the Marcellus Shale project. So it's going to be some really great information. Lehigh Valley Hospital is our sponsor for this event. And again, we just really would like to encourage any woman from throughout Greater Hazleton to participate in this networking opportunity and informational session. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now in News 13, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight is Linda Ryan Miller of Drums. Linda, if you're watching, give us a call right now, 570-459-9813 to win your free movie. Hey everyone, thanks for watching today and be sure you tune in tomorrow on Thursday for FYI. We'll tell you about a special basketball event going on in Hazleton over the weekend. And remember, for breaking news, you can go to facebook.com slash FYI News 13 and also standardspeaker.com. Until tomorrow, take it easy everyone.